Okay, uh, welcome to the next project. This is going over color emphasis that actually talk about how you can use color to emphasize certain things in your um, design. So we just have, uh, this is for A1. It's going to be exact same for A2, right? So we're at the beginning uh, page for A1 at the Canvas homepage. And we're just going to go to calendar view. I like calendar view because I can visually see when things are due. So I have everything turned... If everything's turned on, like all the squares are filled in, it's going to show all of your information of all your different classes. So, and I only have three, but you might have more than ones. You might have eight or so, but turn them all off and then turn on the, only the class that you want. So we're in A1, so we're going to turn on all of that, the assignments for A1. And this is the assignment that's due Friday, right? Since uh, today will be, um, it's early use today, and this is going to be due on, in the class Friday. So we're clearing the color emphasis, and again, this is a tutorial, so you're going to follow along with exactly with the video here. Follow this link to this uh, Google assignment. Now I have, uh, basically, this is the pixel link, and this is uh, the image you're going to start with. So we're going to start with the image. So it's just an image here that I've uh, grabbed of a little phone booth. And what you're going to do is click on the little dots in the right-hand corner, open the window so you can download a copy. Now it gives you this download icon and you can click download. So it's downloaded it to your uh, your Chromebook or your computer, whatever you're using. Okay, so we're gonna close this thing now and go back to, so just click on the gray area, it goes back to the original one. So we're gonna click on this uh, pixel thing. So it was a pixel. So what you do is open up the image, okay? And you're gonna get your downloads. If you're using Chromebook, I think you should be able to um, open up your Google uh, downloads. Then you click the, we just downloaded the antique bench here. So we're going to click open. And it's a large image, so you want it to full HD in the middle here, the one that's already been selected. So click apply, and it's going to kind of like shrink that image down a little bit. That's fine. doesn't matter. So we're going to start with actually then click on the little dots here, and we're going to duplicate that image. Okay. And then we got actually background color, background copy here. So what we're going to do here to start with is we're going to actually use the, this is another, there's a few different ways to selection. We've actually used the shape, but we're now we're going to use the um, polygon selection tool. Because this, um, we're actually going to emphasize the color of, or just actually put this in color. So it's actually just straight edges here. The telephone booth has bringing in straight edges. Now if you were grooming something natural like the edge of this uh, brick ledge, it would not be using a polygon actually. It doesn't have any straight edges, but this telephone booth edge of it are straight. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom into that. And with your, um, if you're using a Chromebook, it'll be a little harder to zoom on your trackpad. So I would actually recommend using this to like zoom in and then just move that to wherever you want. Okay. So we're going to start here. Maybe zoom in a little bit more if you want to. And so we're going to actually just. You don't have to get too terribly close to it, you know. It's just going to actually get more pixelated as you zoom in, kind of thing. And so we can actually move the sliders go up here a little bit. It's fine tuning it. So we're going to zoom in. So we're going to make sure it's polygon. You know, it's a new selection. So we can start with actually just selecting the edge of this. Okay. And it doesn't have to be super perfect, but you want to try and catch the edges here, okay? And you can actually zoom in as much as you need to. Yeah, like I like to zoom in a little bit more so I can see the edge there. And so these are kind of like any kind of image there, even if it's a sharp edge there, it's still going to show up like it's a funky pixels there. So you want to get as close as you can really, basically. And then I'm going to use the fine tuning down here to go down to this. And you want to just kind of go grab that middle there. It's a pixels, so it kind of like it. I guess it's the general um, idea. So if you click on the selection of the middle here. So I'm just scrolling down, selecting the middle here. And again, you can actually fast forward this at any moment. So that way it isn't. If you're not actually watching me, I'll like select this for a long time. And scroll all the way down here to this. Now I'm going to go here and grab the little feet. 
Now the portions of the, um, like where it meets the ground is a little bit uh, jagged here. So what I'm going to do is actually go past that. I'm going to select there, go here, go here, and then go there. And now I've actually gotten to the edge of there. So now I can go back to the straight edges on this side. Okay. Then two line, two line here. So again, you can actually fast forward this. Um, I'm not going to fast forward the video, but still. Um, you feel free to do that on your own time. So I'm just going to open and select the knees. The straight edges here. And again, you might have to do this a few different times to make sure it looks. You can get the selection just the way you want to. But now we've got to this part here. I'm going to go around the edge here. And basically, every uh, curve is, and if you mathematically, it's a series of straight lines, but it's actually just a bunch of straight lines that create that curve there. So we go to here, and then this is a straight line. But this starts the, the main curve of the top of the building. So we're actually not going to make a bunch of straight lines there. So we're going to actually just go here. And I'm going to zoom out now again a little bit. So I'm just going to grab just a little past it. So that way we actually can select that later. And make that smoother at the top there with that uh, rounded roof they has there. So I'm just selecting a little passage, kind of like I did at the bottom here. And I have the selection. Now I can do actually then the zoom out. If I can click uh, zoom and then fit screen here. And so I don't want the, uh, the actual phone booth selected, so I want to select the inverse of that. Select the inverse. So now it's got the actual background selected. Now what I want to do is hit the backspace key. And it basically, I'm, I'm going to turn off this background here. So now the background that I have here, it just shows it's basically transparent. This checker pattern means it's transparent. So we're going to go here to select and deselect. And now we're going to actually use the, it's called busier, busier, I guess, selection. And we're going to zoom in again. Maybe zoom in to this area here. I got fine tune it to like that little area. So I'm gonna start with this area here. And this is actually where you're not gonna be zoomed in too much because you need to actually fit. So you're gonna actually this one, this kind of selection, you make a straight line. It doesn't really matter that you're off the selection. So you want to go to the edge here, and then you're gonna curve it based on the find the edge of there. So you're gonna curve it. So you click twice. And then you find the curve. Okay, that's how the uh, this selection works. So it actually finds rounded uh, edges. So I'm gonna scroll up again. So I can grab this. It's actually straight across. But once I click, then I can curve it to match the roof line. So now it wants me to find the next curve, right? And grab this next curve and actually then move it over a little bit. So I can see that curve goes about like right, about right there, and then I have the last little part. And we have uh, this thing right. It's a straight line, but then I feel curvy a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to finish it off by just clicking straight line, curve, straight line. Doesn't have the curve, I'm just actually going over it. Just finishing of the selection basically is all I'm doing. Okay. So I'm basically just finishing the selection, curving it up a little bit. Doesn't really matter this at this point. I'm just making sure that everything is selected. Okay. Here, curved up a little bit. Here, curved up a little bit, and then I can actually go to my, see that the end of the selection is here, and I curve it up a little bit. 
So now it actually gets, has the selection. Okay. So I can zoom back out here. And now I can just hit the backspace key again. That deletes that little uh, top or top portion off. So we're going to select de uh, select and deselect again. And now we need to go to the bottom and uh, clear that out. Okay. So now this portion of the selection, we're going to zoom quite a bit, zoom in quite a bit. So we're going to go on here. And now this portion, um, I'm not sure what that is. So I just hit the a I hit the escape key. Okay, to get that to stop doing the selection. Now this person is kind of jagged here, and so we're going to use as the eraser tool. Okay, so you want to set our opacity at like eighty percent. So that way it doesn't erase everything. Like it might be a little edge there. So we're going to make the brush size about like ten percent. So ten percent pixels basically and enter and now we're going to come click off the screen and we're going to close this little advertisement there now you want to just scroll over it it leaves a little ghost image there but as soon as you click again and go over it it should erase all the time so you can go every time you click it erases a bit a little more so you basically going to go over this once to get kind of like the edge of it fading in a little bit and then if you have a little bit extra at the bottom here, you can actually go over it one more time. So I'm just going over it quickly and then like the blast, I definitely need to erase the bottom portion. So I'm clicking a few times to get that to go away. And I can clean it up. I can go back and clean up. So I just go over it real quickly, find the edge there. And I can click on the bottom there and make sure it's all deleted. It's pretty uh, clean there at the bottom there. Okay. So you definitely want to be zoomed in quite a bit to this one. So you can actually see where the... Um, where the eraser tool should start. And then... That's getting... You can see like a little edge of a faint. And so you just click another time. Every time you click and hold and drag your mouse, it's going to delete a little bit more. So if I click and hold down more, it's going to delete and make sure everything's deleted. I go deletes all that little ghost image. And so the more you zoom out, the less detail you're going to see there, but the faster it's going to go. So it's kind of like you don't want to zoom in totally, but you want to zoom enough to where you can actually see uh, with pretty close detail what you're actually erasing. So the whole idea of actual selection is that there's some images, certain selections will work good because like the we actually selected the, uh, the the selection tool assignment that we did over the selecting the coins and the money. The coins were per circles, so that was great. We just used the shape. But in this instance, using the shape selection tool is not working because this is not a perfect circle shape so we actually knew that most of it it was uh, straight lines so we can actually grab the polygon tool that just goes a selection off of uh, straight lines and then like we get the rest of it we use that little uh, bezier curve and that used the rounded edges that we needed to then uh, the rest of here, we just use the eraser tool and zoomed in. So you wouldn't do want to erase this whole thing. You just use the eraser tool. That takes too much time, right? So the thing you need to learn about Photoshop is actually there are multiple ways of doing things, but there is a faster way of doing something. Okay. There's always a faster way to do things. Um, I think this looks pretty good. Like it's we don't have to get super close in here. I'm just actually going over the last little bit here to make sure it looks good. So you do any slack where the telephone uh, telephone booth actually meets, meets the ground. That's where we're deleting off here. 
So that's uh, this yellow thing, yellow pieces that you see here, kind of like leaves, I guess. And it doesn't have to be perfect, I guess, just as long as it's close there. But you want to make sure definitely you don't have that straight edge there. You have a kind of like, it's a natural edge there. So then we can zoom out, and it looks pretty close there. So you can see that there's the telephone booth meeting the ground. It's kind of like that natural jagged edge there. And what you're going to do is now turn on the background. And so the background, so you have the, the, the telephone booth by itself on this layer. But if you turn on the background, it's got like, it's got everything on it. So the original image. But we're going to do is select the background. And then what we're going to do is actually use the adjustment and desaturate. So it makes it all black and white. But our telephone booth we have in our background copy is still in color because we haven't desaturated it. Basically desaturating takes all the color out makes it more like grayscale. So we can actually emphasize the telephone booth just by leaving it in color. Just the fact that it has color, basically. you know. And uh, so this is the one way you actually can do that. So this is a real quick way to show emphasis towards that telephone booth by showing its color. And you can see the different, uh, many different television advertisements where they actually use more of a grayscale and then actually one or two images to show emphasis are in color. So this is one way to do that. So you're actually going to click on the file and save here. And what you need to do is leave it as a JPEG. We can leave it as medium here. And you're going to download that. Okay, send it also to your uh, downloads folder. Okay, so we'll close this now. And uh, this was an advertisement. So we're going to go back to the uh, yeah, Google document, Google slide here. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to click File. I think it's like Add a, a File. And you want to grab that antique booth, the one that you actually saved, uh, the new one. So you actually can find that in your Downloads folder. And make sure it's the correct one and upload that. Okay, so that finishes this tutorial. Uh, the next one will be the extension to where you're actually doing one of your own. Okay.